are you satisfied with your understanding of sustainability? If you are not, imagine a journey together, a pluralistic one, with academia, innovators, startups, NGOs, all looking for solutions to the greatest challenge of our time. My name is Samuele Tini, and this is the Sustainability Journey. Welcome to another episode, and today we are going to talk about the movement, a movement that is really trying to shape the world and, and as in the world of the co-founder, it democratizes sustainability. So I'm pleased to have here Sergio Ribeiro, who is the CEO and co-founder of Planeteers. Thank you so much, Sergio, for being here with us today. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an honor. And Sergio, we want to discuss Planeteers and how you are preparing your gatherings with high-profile guests and discussion. but. Our question for all our guests is, what is your sustainability journey, Sergio? I would say that there are two key moments in my life. One was when I was in college studying biological engineering. I was actually feeling probably what almost every college student is feeling is, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do afterwards, right? And I was in touch with several topics with biofuels, uh, waste management. So I, I was very close to these topics and I found that if I really want to make an impact or something that was impactful, it has to be something about and around making the world more sustainable, and especially the markets, economy. I want to help to create solutions and accelerate solutions that will transition our economy to more sustainable. I've thought a lot about this, and I think there was also a very important moment, a key moment, uh, when I was even younger. I was, I don't know, 11, 12. And I was seeing all these people with great achievements in historical books, you know, and it doesn't mean that I, I had to be in a, in the history book in the future, but it actually put me into a perspective on how short life is and how actually we should do the most we can to actually give something back, right? Some, to give some legacy, have some legacy on the things that we do. I think that actually pivot my, you know, this, how scared I was about life being short and pivot into a, a motivation into doing something good and leaving something good behind. And what was uh, something that I was scared about became a motivation and a, a strength. Uh, I would say that in the future became the journey that I chose to, to follow and to create projects and connect with people that are creating more projects, etc. Fantastic, Sergio. I, I really like this connection. That's why it's part of also our generation. And I think it's resonated with many people in the audience, how we, which is the mark. And especially at this crucial moment in history where we have a responsibility, not only for our generation, but the future generations. And this one, I think, was, and, and your experience was the spark that lightened the journey of Planetias. So... For the people that are not familiar, what is Planetia? What, what what are the goals you want to achieve? So it was also in college that this, uh, let's say, entrepreneurial journey be be began. I was trying a lot of different possibilities in my life. I worked in uh, R&D in some labs. I worked in the in an industry. I worked in a factory, a biofuels factory. I worked even, you know, being... Um, a tour guide in the electricity museum about renewables. So I did a lot of things while I was studying. I always worked at the same time. And that was the most important thing I did because it actually allowed me to understand more than where I wanted to go, where I didn't, right? It's very important. We have to try it out. And in the middle of this, these experiences, one was actually, there wasn't a moment, but there was this you know, growing will and wish of doing something out from scratch, you know. I talked with the, my current co-founder, Carlos Carvalho. We met at the Electricity Museum. We were both tour guides. And we were trying to understand exactly what were the obstacles that we were finding in this transition of society and economy. Because awareness was higher than ever. You know, we were having... It's very difficult to beat the reach that some documentaries have, right? Like... Sir David Attenborough, Leonardo DiCaprio. So it's very difficult to beat that ability to reach out to people in, in masses. So awareness was this high. Why weren't actions, you know, following the same awareness that we're seeing in the world, right? Either in ourselves as citizens, but also as businesses, leaders, uh, and um, 
And that was really the, the start. And we started doing some platforms, educational platforms for schools that brought the uh, sustainability message in a gamification way to the schools, uh, actually in the north of Portugal. It was, it was a, great, um, a great project that we did, but it didn't actually scale at the pace that we wanted to. It's very difficult to scale projects in the public sector, I would say, and uh, unfortunately. But it was because of that that we saw we must do something that's a platform that it doesn't depend on third parties, right? And we put it available to the consumers, to the people that are building new products, new solutions in a way that will facilitate not only people to find those solutions, but to acquire them. We actually were a marketplace at first. We were an online marketplace with, which connected the products, sustainable products with the, the consumers. And um, But what happened was the financial sustainability of a marketplace is very difficult. It's very difficult. It's a, a model that demands a lot of burn rate and investment for years to actually sustain itself financially. But it was an important step for us to see that around this planeteer's ecosystem focused on the solutions, right? Making accessible, democratizing the sustainability into society. We found that we were gathering like three verticals, very important verticals in this transition, which was one, the demand, which is consumers, either it's B2C or B2B, which is the, the consumption, the supply, which are, we go from huge companies to startups and SMEs. And we know this is a very fertile soil nowadays. There's a lot of companies emerging every day that are creating new solutions. And there was this third vertical that was the specialist. We were very lucky, but also we worked a lot to actually gather loud voices, you know, important, relevant, influential voices that could actually uh, help to mobilize people into a way that not only was in scale, but in the right way, right? Bringing the, the right frameworks, the right systemic approach, the right way to actually work in the sustainability space. And when we saw this triangle, we saw, look, this, we have to put all these people in the same place because problem solvers, you know, people that are building solutions and working very hard, the entrepreneurial journey is as difficult as the sustainability journey sometimes. So we need to put these entrepreneurs, these new people that are building new solutions into the same space as the consumers and the specialists. And with that, we did the Planet World Gathering was born, the idea, the concept. So building an ecosystem that gathers regularly and that actually is like-minded in a way, not only about the way we approach sustainability, but how we need to collaborate and how we need to cooperate to actually reach the goals that we want to reach. So Planet Years now is actually more focused on building, not just growing the ecosystem, which is important, of companies, of people, of specialists, but actually building more moments where they can actually work together. And that's the, the future that we see Planet Years as the connectors and uh, the bridge that is missing sometimes, for, even for people that are very aware and very committed to it. It's really an interesting, an interesting work and, and really, and really a proposition. And you launched a bit now uh, my subsequent question because I'm sure people now they want to understand the word gatherings. And you have done now two big word gatherings in 2020 and 2022 which they had high profile guests, uh, European Union and uh, leaders. So can you share a bit the lesson learned and which were the objective that you have uh, achieved during the first two gatherings where you also, I think, tested your idea and, and this intuition and the triangle putting together people. And if you can give us also the key moments that I think they touched you. They were very challenging, not just because they were big gatherings, but again, we're talking about 2020. <laughs> The first edition was supposed to happen in April 2020. It was a massive challenge to keep everyone on board. The most difficult challenge was keeping ourselves on board, I would say, because everything was telling us that we shouldn't do it, right? And But we really need to audit ourselves, trying to understand why we were doing this, right? Even before how we would do this, right? Why we were doing this. And... We were doing this because we actually wanted to see some transformation happening. And we found that probably, and that was verified afterwards, that we needed this message more than ever on by 2020. Uh, a message of how can we recover economically in a sustainable way? How can we use this moment, which was ter terrifying, but how can we use this as a way to learn 
from the past and try to do things better, which actually is it's the description of sustainability, right? Learning from the past and trying to do things better. And we, I think that was crucial for us to, to actually keep everyone on board. These names, big names in the sustainability space, either in the business side, the, the governmental side, the innovators uh, on board. Uh, and we did it in October, that year, hybrid model. We had more than 1,000 people per day in the biggest arena in Portugal, uh, which was the maximum allowed by then. And we had more than 20,000 people online from more than 60 countries participating. Last year, 2021, was the, um, was the year of you know, getting back for fit. It was, uh, it was a, a complete haul-in in 2020. But last year, uh, in 2022, we came back with the Planet World Gathering also in Lisbon. Uh, we had more than 4,000 people during those three days and more than 100 countries participating, either on, in person or, or online. And I would say that there was a lot of key learnings, but I would highlight it. And some of them were actually just validations of something of, you know, premises of first thoughts that we have before we did it, right? One was people are eager to know exactly how they can implement sustainability, which is a very vague concept for a lot of people, right? So we needed to actually bring the knowledge on uh, and then bring to the people what is sustainability and in the right way, right? Which is, that was the biggest key learning and validation was we need to translate sustainability. And there's not just one way to translate it. We need to translate it depending to the targets, right? We had to adjust the message to the target that we want to reach. If we're talking to kids, there's one way that we need to share the message. If we're talking with the consumer, you know, the consumer that is committed to do better, it's another way. If you're talking with businesses, it's completely different. And that was a validation. People were eager to go there, to go to a movement that wasn't also, they were eager to have a, a safe space, to so this case, sustainability, where it wasn't pointing fingers, which it happens a lot. Sometimes we go to places where it's very heavy, you know, we bring sustainability in a very heavy way where we just bring the the worst of the, the the way that where we're going to, which is everything is a nightmare, the the world will end if you do nothing. But that was a very key moment where we understood that people left there inspired because we weren't just talking about the reality of how bad things uh, are going. That, that's important to take into, into account, but it just works and we just lead that into action if we balance that into some kind of hope. And it was very important for us to understand that people are were coming to the Planet Year World Gathering. And last year, they came back because they felt something different. And sometimes we need to bring, yes, we need to bring the scientific approach. We need to bring the numbers. But we can't forget the human variable, which is the emotional variable of people, how can we mobilize people with the right emotions, right? Because being afraid, it can lead to reaction. It can, but mostly it leads you to, you know, being freezed, right? And you to freeze. But if you bring that reality on how bad things are, are still going and we're not still there, but that is possible, like the ozone layer challenge that humanity faced, right? We need to bring these topics because that's the place, that's the safe place where people open themselves to see exactly what they're still missing on their business. What there's, what are their challenges? Otherwise, they'll go there and say everything they do is, is, is great, right? We see that a lot in, at events. We need to bring that openness for businesses to, in the organization to say what's still missing so that we can actually bring the solutions. And that's the right equation with hope, you know, and, and belief that together, we can connect the needs with the, the solutions that are already there. I would just highlight that we had a lot of good people, like you mentioned, bringing with that narrative, which is very important. Everything was aligned with that narrative, and, but bringing real solutions, right? Either it was John Elkington or Paul Oaken speaking about the needs of regenerative generation, uh, you know, how can we bring regenerative business models, products, businesses, either uh, was Johan Rockstrom talking about the, the planetary boundaries and translating to people exactly what were the, the dimensions of the planet, planetary boundaries and how 
bad we were and how could we do more. Either was governmental leaders, like you mentioned, also from the European Commission, the uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the president, bringing a very inspirational speech on how Europe with the world, again, we're, we're in this in the same. We're all planeteers, like we say, right? That's the concept of planeteers. Can we actually do more? And projects that are doing, you, you know, are giving very inspiring and practical cards in the business space, such as what if foods that are using the Bambara groundnut in Africa to regenerate soils and local communities work in that to create very well marketed uh, uh, noodles and milk to uh, uh, around the world, or even Gunter Poli. Some people consider him the Steve Jobs of sustainability, bringing projects such as the stone paper, which without spending one drop of water or cutting one tree, they produce paper, they produce notebooks. You know, the, the stone paper is one of those. Uh, so again, I think people need inspiration. People need inspiration. And if we, we make this perfect mix of statistics, numbers, and reality, right, with real projects and hope, I think we'll have the perfect scenario for people to cooperate and actually get where we need to get and accelerate because we need to accelerate too. And it's really important what you say because it's really a common challenge in putting us together without pointing finger and discussing but cooperate and giving hope. That also helps reduce those tensions and brings people together say, this is a common ground, this is our common planet, let's try to work together. And you say 2020 and 22, and now we are you are gathering and gearing up towards the gathering in 2023. So, which are the goals and which are the the objectives that you are trying to see in your third gathering? That's a very relevant question because we feel that this year we're more sober than ever about ourselves and what we do. Again, we need to walk our talk, right? It's like we're saying, so not only about sustainability, but what we do to become more impactful, and. Since day one, we also we always wanted to to build the largest gathering, bring the most people. You know, we were focused in numbers, expecting that everything would work out, and somehow it did. We saw a lot of projects and funds being created and are being developed with the connections and out from the connections that were made at the world gathering. But this year, we're more focused than ever in building meaningful connections. So, promoting the right spaces. They're not just to talk right for people to talk at the stages but bring more out from this philosophy that we have we always had but we want to build more on that which is creating the meetings the bilaterals the working the task forces the workshops where these specialists these amazing people these amazing innovators and investors are coming can actually be in a in a room and discuss what they feel that is missing how can they help each other how can they help the, the territory, right? Either where they're working, either where we're having the event, especially because we're moving from Lisbon to Aveiro, this beautiful city people call the Venice of Portugal, which is also investing a lot in building a sustainable city, but also in sustainable hub for innovation. Aveiro, for example, this year, for you just to know, again, it's not just a beautiful city, which is important when you, you go to an event, but there's an investment being made from the European funds for a blue innovation hub which is going to be in Aveiro. it's a coast city which so there's a lot of investment on and discussions and specialists that i know and will be at our events talking about how can we use the offshore space for renewables in a way that can be sustainable and less impactful to the ecosystems right so there's they have these little boats like the mulisators we call it, like the in venice all the boats are changing to electric. So there's been a lot of investment in the city and we changed there because, again, it was a perfect fit with what we are trying to bring for this edition, which is a committed city, a committed region that will be able to open a lot more opportunities to implement projects, implement solutions, implement businesses in this space. And more than ever uh, from last year, not only we changed the city, but we also bringing a lot of, bringing more of our international partners. There was a lot of bridges that were open since last year from countries, for example, Brazil, um, the United Arab Emirates. There are some conversations also with North European countries that want to be involved, more involved with the Planeteers World Gathering, Africa to the United States, where we have a lot of partners. So this year, I would say that will be the most international one in a way that 
uh, also brings a lot of optimism on the outcomes from these different sessions that we want to put together, uh, create fertile soil again for people to collaborate and create more solutions and scale the solutions that are good and already exist. And, and fantastic. Maybe a question uh, before, you know, you, you preempt a bit my, my thing when you said Portugal and sometimes we say Portugal and the sustainability, but a question that came my mind is like, how can you become a planeteer? How you can be involved in this sort of meeting and gatherings? Yeah, so the, we actually have a manifesto, uh, which we try to, you know, pour everything that we believe. And I think it really comes, it, we're really pouring also a lot of the things that we are and we want to be, you know, into this planeteer's manifesto, which comprehends a lot of things. You know, it's from, for example, it's, The first mindset that we want to build to become planetary is to be solution oriented. So someone that is actually, you know, investing its time, not just to criticize and to point fingers. Sometimes we need those people too, but we actually want to bring together people that are solution oriented, you know, that will spend every second that will be talking with you, trying to understand what do you think that is still missing? And how can I help knowing that you will do the same? And that this is a powerful scenario that we need to always bring to, to become a planeteer. So it's someone that is not trying to destroy the system just by the sake of destroying because it's not working, but someone that wants to understand it, right? And work from the inside to actually shift it to a more sustainable and regenerative model. And then it's someone that, again, is willing to collaborate. And the best way to do that is we have these world gathering meetings every year in Portugal that are happening. And it, that's the best momentum, right? The best moments that we can use for to get to know all the planeteers, the influential people. And I'm always surprised by the people that I meet there. And, uh, and a lot of them were invited by me. So, but even so, even though I'm surprised by what they're doing. So, And I, I think that's an, an amazing feeling. So I would say that everyone that is coming and even that if they don't know what the people that are doing, they're going to be surprised because there are people that are, have huge portfolios. There, we have people that are working in this space worldwide for decades and are very influential. It might help you, you know, to bring your project, your idea. And even if you don't have an idea of a project, might uh, bring you on board. And we have some people that went to our events and started working with some organizations that were there because they wanted to get in this space and to learn more about this. So for us, this is very important. So, but also if you're just, again, either you have a big portfolio or if you're just trying to get in this space, being a planeteer is that. You don't need to have a big port portfolio. You just need to have this right mindset to uh, be aligned and agree with this manifesto, which again, I think it's our beacon to make sure that everyone that meets there have the right mindset to collaborate, to solution to be solution oriented, and to understand that we need to understand the system and people. We need to understand people if we really want to change it. And it's really interesting. And, you know, we'll put also the links and everything to the site and the manifesto and also how to, wait, to join online and discuss because I think it will be a, a wonderful place where to make connection and really bring practical solution, as you said, and that's what we need. Awareness, we have a lot, but we now we need solution to really solve and tackle the problems. And you mentioned before Portugal. So you are Portuguese and you mentioned Aveiro, you mentioned Lisbon. And Portugal historically has been a bridge, a bridge with the language, what is called the lusophonia, you know, the lusophone language and other. And you also now even expanding in the world of uh, the in, in, in the Portuguese speaking world with the gatherings, not only in Portugal, but even in other area. And you mentioned Rio uh, in, in 2024 when I was reading and, and, and seeing, you know, the Planeteers uh, information. So I want really to ask, how do you see Portugal and the Lusophone world as an emerging uh, leader? It's not the, the traditional ones we thought about the US or another superpower. Which can role they can Portugal can play in this uh, in fostering the global sustainability initiatives? Portugal is not perfect. No country is, right? Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a big journey to doing several aspects in the sustainability space. We're very good at renewables. We've been investing a lot in this space, but um, I believe that more than making this sustainability or implementing sustainability models and systems in our home, 
we are really missing these connectors because people are valuing, putting enough value, you know, to people that will connect, that will promote this collaboration. In Portugal, like you said, it's historically a connector. It has a lot of great relationships around the world. It's considered one of the most valuable passports, for example, in that uh, I translate this to the means that it's a, a country that has good relationships with most of the world, which is important. And then you have, of course, the language, which some people don't know. It's one of the most spoken languages in the world, too. Not because of Portugal itself, but because of the legacy that we left from in Brazil, right? In the African countries like Mozambique, Cape Verde, so Angola. I really believe that Portugal and the Portuguese people, I would say, can actually try to bring the most of these countries when together. Not being higher or not meaning that they can be, you know, in a higher position than the others. It's just an important role to have connecting these countries, which actually have a more potential to scale impact than Portugal, right? Because there's more population. Let's talk about Brazil, for example, right? Brazil has this huge population. There's this huge responsibility of a country that has the privilege and the responsibility of that privilege, like like Spider-Man, right? The uncle said, <laughs> great power comes great responsibility. But they, with the Amazon and all the, the territory that they, they need to take care of. But so that's just one of the examples and one of the reasons uh, which why Planet Years is starting to work with several entities there. Specifically in Rio, Rio uh, is working a lot to become an innovation hub in Latin America. And in this innovation space, they're very committed to bringing innovation in the sustainability space specifically. And I believe that with this partnership that we'll be building with some of the local entities uh, like the the mayor, the agencies that you know bring investment to the to, to the city, they're building now, for example, some hu innovation hubs in the, the specifically for, for the the carbon markets, specifically using AI and blockchain to actually improve how this system is working. They're bringing the they call it the translation is it's the they have the Tomorrow Museum and they have like the Tomorrow Hub where they're also wanted to build a, a very uh, innovative space to bring businesses and innovations to the city. And again, for me, it was very clear if we wanted to bring those people together, we sh should do this in Portugal, but we must bring also these conversations to different continents specifically. Like I said, Rio is one of the most advanced conversations that we have to actually do a gathering there and actually, you know, again, leave a legacy there, which is not just bringing people together, is what can we bring to the city? What can we bring to the country that actually stays there? Right and contagiates positively the rest of the countries and and the cities and the countries around it. Again, like I mentioned, we still we're working a lot with the United Arab Emirates because there's a lot of committed people there that are willing to bring more investment to this space and actually become a reference in this space. But like I said, we need everyone. We need everyone to work together. Brazil is a very important step. The Lusophon countries are probably. And I would say, I really believe this, that they're a very important platform to actually scale whatever we can do. And, and it's really interesting to see the connection in the world and spanning through the country. It's a bit also, I mean, very small scale, what we are trying to do also with the podcast, trying to bring people from all over the planet. And it's good to see Brazil, the Gulf, which is also starting to, to work a lot in sustainability, Europe, and, you know, I, I can say, maybe we can discuss this, how to bring planet here, so to Africa. I would say that it, it must happen. I would say that because Africa, I would say that is the continent with the biggest potential of all. Uh, to, to actually, there's less habits on the economic side, on the manufacturing. So it's, it's more of, um, I wouldn't say blank paper, but again, it's, there's more margin, you know, to develop the countries in Africa in a sustainable way to become a reference. And we've seen that the African people, when they actually put their minds into something, right, especially the youth, if they actually see 
the opportunities and the agencies in, in the, the system in Africa helps the youth to actually see the opportunities in building sustainable products, sustainable businesses. I really think that Africa can be a, a sustainable superpower if things are done right. Fantastic. And I'm willing to, to help and give an hand to, to transform this journey because, as you said, we were in the discussion, leapfrogging, uh, development and really going to sustainability in Africa is the perfect place where you can develop a different model. And going towards that, I want to ask in the future, how do you see the challenges in this space from your discussions of an innovator or solution oriented people? Which are the challenges and opportunities that you see in the sustainability space? And how can the innovation and the collaboration, especially the one that you are trying to build in the world gatherings, uh, can help over overcome them? The biggest challenge that we face worldwide is this sentence, is we always did this way. <laughs> and even if when people don't say it, they believe it and act and decide by it. I think that's the biggest challenge, especially when people don't say it. But again, they decide to act like it because they're not aware that they're doing their decisions following that sentence. So all the inputs and intakes that I had from these last years and the innovators that I met is we really need to bring people together in order to do one thing, which is, again, scale, impactful, financial, sustainable solutions. I think this is the key word. Because whether we like it or not, the world works around money. Again, we live around money. That's what, why I believe, and I, I, Gunter Pauli says this in that amazing book of his, the Blue Economy book, which is, he's very focused on job creation. Because we spend most of our times on our jobs, right? We depend to live on our jobs. So I really think that the, the most important metric on this transition is green jobs some people call it like this but that your job must be or the big majority of the jobs must be transition to a green act activity that's where you spend most of your time i believe that collaboration allows us to solve this complex equation sometimes of finding the the, the real problem one location because they're different for example there are several problems that are happening in kenya probably that there might be an innovator in portugal that has that solution Right? Or might be someone in Sri Lanka or Brazil or the United States. And we really need to, you know, make the world smaller in that sense of trying people to understand that not only the consequences of what we're doing affects all of us, the world is that small. So it doesn't matter if I throw trash to, to the ocean here, it will affect, it will, it will go to, to the United States, to Brazil, whatever, right? But also, we should use this to the solution creation, which, again, you can't do it alone. Someone that's 100% sure, I found this in every case, right? Someone that is doing an amazing solution usually don't have or the financial resources or doesn't have the connections or doesn't have the ability to go, and, you know, to market. Or we need complementary skills to actually scale the solutions that are already there. And the most successful projects that I've seen usually are the ones that understood this and implemented a system where they don't shut off, you know, they, they don't shut inside and, and you know, and, and close themselves in. We're trying to, to be the best so we can't, you know, hear anyone else. We can't bring anyone else to work. The ones that feel I'm having amazing, an amazing project, an amazing product, for example, I need to scale this. I need to find a partner, someone with influence in that market where this solution is needed the most. Because otherwise, you'll take probably five years or four to go there if you try to do it on your own, right? The same thing about, for example, just about uh, fundraising and investment, right? Some projects need some funding and investment at the beginning, and people, they, they forget that's help. They think it's, it's for their own. No, no, you're asking for help because you need that financial support. So I would say that if we want to change the way people lead themselves into that sentence of, I always did this way, the best way to do this is not only translate this message of sustainability into a more optimistic, inspirational uh, way, but also in a very practical, business-wise way. So saying, here's an op a financial opportunity 
And there's a lot of different ways to go, which is you can benefit financially either for being more efficient, saving more resources, saving, you know, whatever. Either opening a new business model that you're using uh, byproducts, you know, you're using something that before was waste to you. And we've seen that people using some byproducts that were waste, you know, and the burden and then became a new product, right? And a new narrative, inspirational narrative. Or even just changing the model. People, we have interface from the carpets that decades ago they shifted in, and or or Philips. I don't, I don't want to mention companies on purpose, but they really changed the model in saying we're not, we don't want to sell lights, we don't want to sell carpets. We're going to use a model where we rent those, and they're our responsibility of you know recovering them, fixing them. So it also you know, extends the life of the product in a different way just by shifting that business model, which is more interesting for the client, more interesting for the, the business, and more interesting for the planet, right? So we need also to bring, to break this barrier of people, inspirational but practical. And that is a very difficult but possible spot to, to get. Totally agree. Sometimes we want the best is the enemy of good. And, and sometimes there is no focus on the solution that, uh, and really the steps towards the, the objectives. And I agree with you. There's a massive opportunity to create a lot of work and a lot of wealth out of our transformation from the extractive system to regenerative system. Of, and also is a shift of, the, of our mindset. And the question now is it within this shift and transformation, of course, Planeteers wants to play a role as a connector, as, a, as an actor there that brings solution and people together. So where do you want to take Planeteers? Which are the plans for the next years? The Planeteers World Gathering must be a place where we create these meaningful relationships and partnerships to actually create new solutions and sources and, and scale them. We, there's also two spaces where we believe that we can actually build more towards this goal of ours, which is the same, right? create and accelerate solutions and help the solution makers. One is create more content. Uh, and content, I would say, you know, do some echo on the content that we already have from these amazing people that come to the World Gathering, some of our partners, and actually throughout the year, you know, spread more the words around businesses that are doing some of the things that we mentioned before, right? Being inspirational, practical, financial, sustainable, social, environmental, so systemic approach to businesses that are work. So that's one. Help these brands, these startups to actually put out the, the word out there uh, with content. The, the second additional thing that we're seeing is the connections and the, the ecosystem that we built around us really allow, the, allow us to actually do some tailor-made connect, connecting, you know, connection making. We do this already around the, you know, the, 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 the work of Planeteers, which sometimes we know some projects and say, look, there's this city. You know, there's this agency that is really looking for a solution that brings, you know, their challenges are food security, arid soils, water scarcity. And I think you have the right solution to do that. So as soon as we start to understand that we have this capability, I think it's pretty obvious that we should try to do more, not just create these sessions at these events, which again, we're building more sessions that will bring people closer to discussion and, and working collaboration. But between events, you know, work with this ecosystem that we have and try to understand what are the needs of some of these partners and actually connect with some of these solutions. And these partners can be businesses, but can also, again, be cities and entities that, uh, that uh, manage cities, manage countries, governments. So that's a place where now we're working more and more to try to have beside the impact of the event itself, raise more awareness, inspire, inspire more people with content, but also connect more entities regarding a very specific project. And then we can help both uh, solving their own problems. And, and fantastic. It's such a, a perspective in, into the future and really how to also to get most of the values and, and create, as I say, meaningful connection and, and practical solution, which is, I think, the team that is coming out from the work that, uh, that you are doing. I know we can uh, listen and I'm sure we will have you again, maybe in the future to see where you have taken plant here, maybe in 25 or 26. 
But the last, the question that we usually la- ask to our change makers and leaders that comes to the politics is like a tip to our audience, an advice for people that they want to make a difference. Sometimes people, they have this agency, but they don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. And sometimes people, they stop at criticism or they do activism. But really, what they can do from passing from their words to the action. I really believe, again, I, I stick to our manifesto as a, as I think a very important tool for everyone to try to understand how can we position ourselves to become more efficient and more efficient and more effective actually into bringing the transformation that we need to the world, right? So that, that manifesto is not just because I believe that it just also gathers all the lessons that we took into what we must become to actually connect with the people and the people that are still working by that sentence, right? We always did this way. So, but I would say that more than that, even when you become that person, you work hard every day, weekday, weekends, you know, we, even when you commit your whole life to something, there will always, we will always have the naysayers. We will always have those voices saying that it's useless or they, unfortunately, is the big majority of people around you especially when you and you always start this way when you have nothing to show it's the most difficult part right and and that's when we get to this point for me one of the toughest challenges that we face in life i would say but especially professionally and especially in this space it's even more clear in this space is we really need to be stubborn about the purpose right why are we doing this where do i want to get and at the same time, we have to be very flexible on this pro- on the process, right? To understand how can I get here? Because one, the world is always changing. The only thing that we can actually be sure is that every unexpected things happen, right? And we've seen that in the last three, four years. But also because you will get a lot of opinions along along the way, thousands of opinions. People will open it about everything, and unfortunately, again, usually, is you know somehow trying to, to deviate to a different way, not to go into the, the path that you believe in. I don't know why, but that happens, right? So the, the biggest challenge I would say, which is balance conviction with the openness to feedback. This balance is crucial for us to not, you know, to, to be shut off about, because we need feedback. We need the world to give us feedback, to learn and, you know, improve and, and do better. But we really need to always have that filter about, okay, this is my purpose. And never quit on evaluating and auditing yourself about the purpose. Because sometimes you think it's one, you know, some, but it's not. In the last 10 years, I thought my personal motivation driver was this one, but no, maybe it's this one. And it's very important that you just keep improving and learning in this way. Because if you understand yourself, you understand your purpose, you can be stubborn about that, and then you can just leave the rest to be flexible. That would be my or tip that I've learned. And fantastic tip, because when you are building, and especially building at this scale, bringing leaders, eh, I know the challenges are massive, and you have to have your North Pole, your purpose, and war, and of course, using the feedback to improve and to continue working on your direction. So. Thank you so much, Sergio. It's been a, such an inspiring and insightful episode. I'm really glad and it was an honor and pleasure having you uh, on the show. Thank you so much, Sergio. Thank you, Samuel. And please, please join us at the Planet Years World Gathering. We'll be glad to have you here with us. <laughs> Are you satisfied after this wonderful episode? Let's continue together our sustainability journey.